Hello, this is Mark Summers from Summers Technical Services. Uh, we're getting ready to get started on a little SolidWorks simulation, flow simulation actually, uh, thermal analysis of some heat sinks. I'm going to put a little thermoelectric cooler on the bottom side of a uh, Abbott Thermaloy heat sink and learn a little bit about conduction and convection and radiative uh, radiation heat transfer. So first thing we need to do is build a CAD model and so uh, let's uh, look and see some of a preliminary model that uh, one of the students made and talk about some uh, ways to turn a good model into a great model and then we'll be ready for the simulation video coming up, coming up uh, uh, next. So let's get started. So here's the uh, model here so first thing I do is take a look and see uh, in the tree what things look like and let's see that the material is not specified yet so I need to go to the manufacturer's website no better place to go than them and I'm looking here and it looks like 6063 T5 is their common material that they sell these heat sinks for so let's assign that material so I just right click edit material SOLIDWORKS has a nice library of materials. I'll go to aluminum alloys, 6063T5, is that it? I think so, so we'll apply and close. That way that'll be ready to go when we do our analysis. So the other thing I do is I look at these sketches and find any under constrained sketches, which make me nervous. So let's take a look at the sketch here. Right click edit sketch, do a space bar and look down from the top. And it looks like they've got one of the fins drawn. The rest of them are under constrained. They look like they're drawn correctly, but with just a little nudge, they're going to go out of whack. So we want to make sure everything's constrained. So we could go down here and grab this line, control click this line, control click this line, go down the line and grab all of those and make those all collinear. And then we could come in here and make this one and this one and this one all equal to one another. And on and on and on. And then do the same thing on the other side. I'd prefer to just make one of these fins and then do a feature pattern to replicate these fins down. So let's do that. Let's get rid of all this stuff here. And now I've got one sketch or one rectangle it looks like it's coincident to these corners here, which is what I want. And it's got a width on here of 0.062. And I'm looking at the data sheet, and I'm not seeing a width of this thing. So it looks like that dimension is missing. But it's included, uh, it's totally constrained, I believe, here. So let's figure out what that width really is based on these other dimensions. See if that number is correct. So if I get my trusty... Uh, HP calculator out here, my HP Prime calculator. Uh, what am I going to do? I want to say that distance between each one of these centers of these fins, I'm assuming are all equal space. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I got ten times 0.262. Whoops. Ten. What am I doing here? There we go. 10 enter 0.262 times. So that's the width. That gets me all the way to the center here to center here. And if I subtract from that the overall width, 2.682 minus. So that leaves me with half of a width, half of a width. So one of these widths is 0.062, and that makes sense. That's 16th of an inch. So it looks like that number, I, I believe that number, 0.062. So that looks good. I'll get out of the sketch. And it didn't like the fact that I got rid of all those fins. So this fillet command is, uh, give me an error message. So for now, I'll just roll the roll bar up, uh, roll back bar up so it stops there. Now I'm going to do my uh, pattern. So I'm going to grab the, pre select the feature, go to features linear pattern and I'm going to define a direction with my plane since my planes never move 
and the distance is going to be it's 262, right? Go back to my data sheet, make sure I haven't screwed something up. 262, so I need 1, 2, 3, 4, I need 11 of them, right? Gives me a nice little preview. That looks beautiful. And so that's a lot easier than messing with those constraints. Now I have to fix that fillet or just put it back in, and so I want to just put it back in. And so, uh-oh. Come on, so it works. It's busy thinking. So the fill is going to be half of 062, so I'll go fill it. And I'll say the fill is 062 divided by 2. And I'll grab these edges. 1, 2, 3, 4. Go down the line here. And I'm not sure that engineering judgment tells me that if I didn't put the fillets in there, it's probably not going to make that big of a difference. But what the heck. Put them in anyway. All right, now we'll say OK. And that looks beautiful. All right, so no more uh, under constrained sketches. I got my material. Let's roll the roll back, uh, roll back bar back down to the bottom. I'll delete that fillet command. And now let's look at the sketch on the bottom. This is where I guess we're going to put our thermoelectric cooler. And these are 40 millimeter, uh, 40 millimeter square. So if you type in 40 mm, even though it's a inch part, it'll convert that to inches. So it looks like those numbers are correct. So I think we're good to go. Last thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, split this surface at the bottom. We're going to put the load, the heat load, just in there. And so we're going to insert, I always forget where this is, curve. Yeah, there we go. Insert curve split line. We want to split that face into two faces, one with the uh, inside the 40 millimeter square and the other face outside. So we're going to apply that load to exactly where we want it. So I'll say split line. I'll hover over the blue box. It says select the sketch to project. Well, that's this sketch right here. Here it's asking for the face. And assuming SolidWorks doesn't die on me here, I'll be able to select that whole bottom face. Don't leave me, Maverick. There we go. Bottom face, OK. And now that thing is split into two faces. So spacebar, ISO view. All right, so that's a good looking model. We'll go ahead and save this. Uh, looks like they had an earlier version than I have. It's OK. Yeah, sure, why not? All right, so that kind of cleans that up. So it looks like we're ready. So get your model going. Uh, make sure you've constrained all your sketches. Make sure you apply your material. Make sure you have your face on the bottom with the uh, 40 millimeter square pad for the thermoelectric cooler. And you'll be ready to go when we do our CFD thermal flow analysis uh, later this week. So until then, this is Mark Summers from Summers Technical Services, and we'll see you in the next video.